Italy loves bread and pasta, arguably more than any other country in the world. But before it hits the plate, it all starts here in the Italian fields from Tuscany to Ascoli, land that has produced wheat for centuries. But this wheat, about two months away from harvest, is special. It's the product of an unconventional wave of farming brought to Italy from Syria by this man, Salvatore Ceccarelli. He's an Italian plant geneticist and a retired professor who lives in Ascoli Piceno, east of Rome. He may not look like a rebel, but his work is poised to transform farming as we know it. I don't know if you're aware that the current Pope Francis is now also accused of being a revolutionary. I think I, I have to send him a tweet. <laughs> It's revolutionary, I mean, and it's certainly, you know, bucking the trend of what most folks are doing. Ceccarelli's revolution is a form of organic farming called evolutionary plant breeding. Farmers plant a mixture of seeds and replant the high-performing ones at next harvest. Over time, the crops evolve to the soil. This is the opposite of today's norm. A typical farmer usually plants uniform or hybrid seeds developed by multinational agribusinesses. It's always somebody asking the question, are you aware your ideas are basically going against uh, the big monopolies of seed, the pesticide, and so on? Ceccarelli refined his ideas about evolutionary plant breeding in Syria, where he lived and worked for 30 years. The farmers liked to be involved in seed selection. They'd handpick the high-performing varieties and share grains with neighbors. But he ran into trouble. The government of Syria told me that uh, um, the work that I was doing with farmers uh, uh, was not what, what I was supposed to do. The Syrian government didn't approve of the approach because it couldn't regulate it. This was for me the proof that the official system simply did not work uh, and was not going to provide farmers with what they want. Uh, the only way around was the, to bypass the system. My primary uh, target are still uh, those uh, millions of farmers uh, who are struggling. Ceccarelli believes the evolutionary method could help farmers around the world face challenges posed by climate change. Italy, for instance, faced the worst drought on record last year. But to plant the seeds in Italy, they first had to get permission. It took four years of lobbying but the European Commission eventually granted a special waiver for the seeds to be taken to market in Europe. Rosario Floridia was one of the first farmers to plant the Syrian wheat mixture. Mi ha stupito, mi ha, mi ha, mi ha affascinato, ecco. Posso dire che questa popolazione segue passo passo quello che succede eh, al tempo. Quindi questo è una bella, una bella cosa. It took a few years, but Floridia stuck with the evolutionary method and his efforts paid off. The wheat adapted to the Tuscan soil, and his flour, pasta, and bread business is booming. While the practice of evolutionary seed breeding is not very common, this isn't the first time it's been tested. In the 1920s, the evolutionary breeding method was tested on wheat and barley at UC Davis. The wheat is still there, but it doesn't look as good as the uniform wheat variety growing next to it. That's because the fields were left to adapt on their own. Raising evolutionary crops requires more labor and engagement from farmers. Back in Italy, Guido Fiorentini has practiced conventional wheat farming for nearly his entire life. He's 88 now. Despite the subsidies offered by the European Union to organic farmers, he is reluctant to make the switch. Non lo so. Ho i dubbi. Non lo fai con un anno, ma ci vuole gli anni per tenerli in quelle condizioni, ma sa chi non lo sa, non lo sa. But Ceccarelli thinks the stakes are too high to not try something different. As chemical seed companies consolidate, taking more control of the seed breeding process, 
he believes this method could help small farmers stay in the driver's seat.